Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at this thing here. This is one of the most underrated telemetry sensors, in my humble opinion, on the whole FR Sky system. Now, this is a GPS sensor version 2. I've got this one from Graves RC in Orlando, Florida, one of the old school remote control stores around. Probably spend as much time fixing people's stuff and giving advice as they do selling stuff. But I got two of these from there because I wanted to do a video and show you how they work. Now this is a smart port sensor. So it plugs into an X-series receiver. This is an X8R, but anything that starts with an X, like the XSR, X4R, X6R, any of those will work with this. You simply plug it in using the three-wire cable and you're good to go. Installation is a piece of cake. Once you've got the cable plugged in, all you need to do, put a bit of foam on this side and stick it in the craft so that this piece, which is where the sensor is, is pointing towards the sky. Now, why do I say it's underrated? Well, let me give you an idea of the kind of information that you can get from your craft just by popping one of these on the side of the receiver you've already got in there. So here we are, this is us on the ground, a nice bright yellow colour, and we have a model flying in the sky with a GPS that's reading and sending back the coordinates of the model. So, of course, the first thing we're going to get is the position of the model, which is going to be handy if we ever have a bit of a problem and the model starts to disappear or goes down. If we can read the GPS coordinates, we can then go out and walk exactly to where the craft is and recover it. The other thing that it also gives you is the GPS location also gives you the GPS height above sea level. So we also have an idea of how high it's flying as well. So that's pretty good. We know where it is and we know how high it is. And in those places where we have a ceiling of height, maybe might be 400 feet, we can then use the starting position and the position the plane's at to figure out when we've gone higher than 400 feet, which is handy to know. We could even set an alarm up so when that happens, the radio lets us know that we're going too high. Next thing we can do is also get a speed indication from the Model 2. Now, from moment to moment, it's reading the GPS coordinates and figuring out how far it's moved in what time. Knowing those two things, it can give us speed. And all of these things, like the height and the speed, the units can be changed from feet, inches, meters, whatever, kilometers an hour, miles per hour, whatever you need to be. So you can change the readout on the radio to match whatever your local or favorite measurement unit is. Other things you can do, which is cool, is when you actually fire the radio up, if you reset telemetry, then the radio remembers some of this information. So it remembers the GPS information for the starting line. And then because of that, the radio can calculate the actual distance away from you. So if you are flying away and maybe you're only allowed to fly 400 feet away from you, then you can set it up so that again, the distance is being monitored and measured and you can see how far the model's flown away from you from where it took off or where the system was initiated and you reset telemetry. The last thing you can do is range and this is really cool. So what you can tell the radio is actually Distance is good, but I want to know the range. So it might be actually 400 feet out and it might be 400 feet up in the air. How far away is this thing? So let's go through and I'll show you how to set all this up. There are a couple of really cool things in OpenTX 2.1 and that's what we're using in here. So if you're using a previous version, some of this might not make sense. We've already done a video where we had a look at discovering sensors, but we'll do that here. But if you want to know a little bit more about how OpenTX 2.1 telemetry is different and new, then go and watch that video. So when you discover new sensors, OpenTX also gives you the ability to create other sensors using that sensor data as well. So just like we've had a look at, although the GPS by default is going to be giving us things like the location, the speed, the altitude above sea level, we can then use these kind of things on this slide to then create other sensors that will give us that things like the distance and the range. Add or multiply, something we'll have a look at. That just applies that function to the chosen telemetry value or sensor that you're looking at. So you can do things like you, if you have a current sensor, you can keep track of the total consumed milliamp hours at any point. The precision number is how many points behind the decimal point. So if you're flying away and you want to know it's 4.23 feet away from you now, or whether it's 4.2 or 4 feet for the same measurement, it's just how much granularity you want. 
precision is how you set that. The thing with this is the GPS sensor on these things isn't particularly big, it's really small. So the precision and accuracy isn't fantastic. So there's no point in going to super precision on something like the GPS sensor, it's just going to jump around. Offset allows you to apply a permanent offset to a sensor value. That's useful for things like voltages, where if the voltage you're reading isn't completely spot on with what you're reading on the craft with a voltmeter, then you can use an offset so that that voltage on the telemetry screen exactly matches what's on the model. Auto offset is fantastic. We're gonna use that a lot with the GPS sensor. Auto offset allows the radio to take the existing values and to net those off the values that then come in subsequently. So for example, if we're at a flying field that's 120 feet above sea level, when we fire up the radio, it's going to tell us that the altitude is about 120 feet. Now, obviously, we don't want to fly and then whenever we see the altitude think, okay, well, it's now 200 feet in the air, but it's now 120 feet above sea level, so actually it's 320 feet. What auto offset does is allows you to say to the radio, just remember we're at 120 feet, so essentially the altitude reads as zero, then from here on in, any increment in height is with reference to that baseline. And again, that's really also handy for things like distance and range too. Filter can make the values less jumpy, so if you are finding that the values when you look at the tele telemetry screen are bouncing around too much, you can just slow it down a little bit, and that can be handy with things like the GPS on stuff like quadcopters, because you'll find that even though the quadcopter might be pretty still, um, the lack of precision because of the small sensor on the GPS smart port sensor just makes it wander around, and it can read you know, kind of a couple of meters in any direction, including up or down. Persistence makes the measurement just that, it stays in memory. So if you want to do it for flight time, so maybe you're looking at something like you're trying to track how much battery you've got left, you haven't swapped the battery out but you've had a number of flights on it, it just means you can keep track of information like that. So now we've looked at that, let's jump onto the radio, show you how to set some of this stuff up. We'll set it up so that we're getting range, height, distance, and also things like speed from this one little sensor. So let's use some of those things that we've just looked at in the telemetry menu. Now I haven't got my GPS powered up so let me just plug it in. Telemetry recovered. So there we have our connection and we can also display the height above the ground and I'll show you how I've set that up. So while the GPS is hunting for the satellite and at the moment the GPS has a fast flashing LED we're going to go into menu press a long page and again this is OpenTX 2.1 go down here and we've already gone through and we've discovered new sensors and the ones that appear by default are RSI, RSSI uh, receiver battery and then you get these ones here so you get GPS, which is going to give us the latitude and longitude when it gets a lock. G altitude is going to give us the altitude above sea level. G speed is going to give us the speed that the model is traveling at and the date which is coming from the system. Now the cool thing is, is you can select, press and hold enter, hit edit. You can change the units here. So at the moment my speed's in miles per hour, but if I select it, I can select it in things like kilometers per hour, feet per second, meters per second, whatever you like, which is really nice. The other thing you can do is you can actually select and copy this. So what I've done is I've actually selected and copied G Alt, and I've made it into this one here. I've renamed it called G Alt 2. Now G Alt 2, is set to feet because I'm looking at the height in feet so I know my ceiling and what I've done here is I've set the precision as zero point and that's going to give me my height in just feet it's not going to try and give me percentage of feet and that's again because the GPS is going to wander around then we have the auto offset is set now when I reset the telemetry it'll take the reading that it's got at that point and that will be automatically taken away from any further reading so we've got auto offset selected next one then we'll look at is G range so in G range again it's very similar so we are using uh, calculated it's, it's a distance formula again we're in feet because uh, I'm trying to keep within legal limits here and we're using the 
GPS sensor and GPS alt. Now actually, I don't just need how far away it is, I also could do with height. So I'm going to use AL2, because what that means is that it'll it's the measurement along the ground, how far away I am, which the GPS will give me, and AL2 will give me my height in relation to where I took off from, and using that it'll give me my range. The last one I'll show you is distance, which is very similar to range, but the difference is I haven't put the AL2 sensor in here as well. And in these, so when you use things like distance, you don't get the ability to do things like auto offsets. So that is how you get all of those different readings. Majority of them are supplied, but you can create your distance, range, and also the height in relation to where you took off from. Other couple of things in here that I'll show you is on the top bar down here, it does give you the opportunity to add an altitude. Now I've obviously selected GAL2, and AL2, remember, is that one relative to where it took off from. And by selecting that, that then appears on my main display, and we can set up alarms and other things for it too. What you'll find is when the GPS gets a lock, that will change to the number. I'm about 120 odd feet above sea level where I'm sat right now. So that will change to about 120. All you have to do, press and hold enter, select reset, and then say reset telemetry. Hit enter, and then that will zero out the altitude with the model sat on the ground. And from there on in, everything is relative because that's populated all of the auto offsets. Now there's one more thing I want to show you, so let's go back to the bench, because once you have all this set up, if you want to, you can actually use it in log files. So if I very quickly go back into the menu, what we can do in here, for these sensors, you can decide which ones you want to be captured. So if I go into altitude, I could say, for example, that what I'd really like to do is for this to go into the logs just by putting a little cross here. That means that when you start your SD telemetry logs running, this information is saved. Once you have all of this information in the log files, you can do something really cool with it. So let's jump onto the computer and I'll show you a really cool trick with Google Earth. So here we are in OpenTX Companion and we can look at the log files and do everything here. Word of caution, when you are starting up the GPS, because of that smaller sensor that the uh, GPS smart port sensor is using, it takes a little bit of time to lock on. So be prepared, particularly for the first flight of the day, to kind of wait five, six minutes for it to create a lock. So what I've done to show you the accuracy of this, I've actually just walked along the ground with the GPS in one hand and the radio recording the SD logs in the other and I'll show you how you access everything and get it all working so you can look at the logs in companion but you can also play with Google Earth. Now the thing you have to do to make this all work is you need to tell OpenTX companion where the Google Earth executable is. Go into settings, settings and then click on application settings and in here is the Google Earth executable. It's probably going to be in somewhere like Program Files, Google, Google Earth, and then you'll find something like Google Earth.exe in there. Uh, that's where you have to uh, put it in. Once you've done that, then you can look at the log files. So I'm going to click on this icon here, which is View Log File. It'll ask me for the log file we're interested in. Uh, it's on the SD card in the Tyrannus in a subdirectory called Logs. I'm going to click on GPS demo and open it and there it is. If I click on uh, the standard things that I've recorded and these were all of the pieces that I have written to the SD logs, remember that, that little tick box at the bottom. So we have things like the G, the altitude, so there we are walking along and moving around. Now interestingly, and this is something to do again with a small sensor on the GPS V2 FR Sky smart port telemetry sensor, Occasionally we'll do this and it'll kind of read different altitudes and it will wander about. So it isn't perfect to the inch, but it gives you an idea of what's going on. There's the speed in miles per hour. You can see here that I was walking along. So I walk obviously at about 
four miles an hour ish. Now the really cool thing is because we've set up the application in Companion, we can look at this in Google Earth. So that's what that little blue Earth is down here. So if I click on that, it'll start Google Earth. It'll load the flight path into Google Earth. And there it is, GPS demo on the left hand side. And it'll zoom all the way in. Here we go. Okay, so, and there is the flight in three dimensions. <laughs> but you can see I was actually walking along the ground. So you can see that the accuracy isn't super duper, because according to this, I was actually flying in the air. And if I could do that without a quadcopter, I wouldn't need to be buying all this remote control stuff. But that does give you a rough idea of how it actually works and the ability to see your flights in 3D. We have looked at other stuff on the channel where we've used things like Mission Planner, and Mission Planner also has allowed us to do things with Google Earth, but by adding this little inexpensive GPS sensor onto your existing model, it gives you all this functionality. You can see where it is, where it's been, how fast it's going, how high it is, how far away from you it is, the range of the craft from your current position, and it'll also allow you to do things like give you a better chance of recovering the craft if it goes down. You can look in the log file to see where it was when you lost it or you lost connection to it. And you can also do this cool stuff in Google Earth, kind of play back your flight and see what you were doing. But caveat, two things, the sensor takes a while to boot up, so be prepared for that. Don't expect to just plug it in, count to 15 and fly. And also the accuracy of the sensor isn't super duper because they're using the smaller GPS sensor on top of it. So who knows, maybe the version three with a bigger sensor will have more accuracy because we tend to use the bigger sensors in things like APMs, PixHawks, and some of the other flight controllers that will do GPS flight modes. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.